Marrying Linus is unfortunately impossible in Stardew Valley. So in protest, I will be fully befriending him and everyone else in Stardew Valley to unlock a secret achievement. I will be continuing my file from this video here so everyone marryable is already done. But nonetheless, I will be starting from day one. There was a military officer outside my door. I was luckily not enlisted and got to work clearing my small farming area, hoeing the ground and fertilizing. I then headed into town to watch Harvey do some Pilates, purchasing some seeds along the way. Returning home, I worked on watering and planting until nightfall. I realized on day two that to complete my goal, I would need to get access to the sewers for Krobus and get dwarf scrolls for the dwarf. But I got started by grabbing a bunch of gifts and heading up. Demetrius better be worried. I accepted some quests and gave some gifts before eventually deciding to contribute to society and finished the vault room in the community center. I sold an entire barn of random goats the next day. Of course, I would never sell the lads. With plenty of space, I headed to Money's and bought 12 pigs. My money is gone. I then grabbed a quartz and gave it to Linus for a quest, gave out some more gifts and went to the secret woods as I needed hardwood for Robin's quest. And after finding a meteor, I worked until midnight clearing my farm. It was Kent's birthday on day four, so I picked up a flower off the floor and handed it right over. I then chopped a bunch of trees on my farm before remembering that I had completed the vault room and bought a ticket to the desert. I met Sandy and spent some time gathering cactus fruit before heading back home. There, I gave away some more gifts and spent the night down in the mines, collecting stone. Grabbing my resources and chopping a couple more rocks, I bought a deluxe coop on day five. I then bought some random things from the traveling cart and cleared the entire secret woods before grabbing some gifts and purchasing a whole lot of food. I planted the spaghetti outside the carpenter's home and spent the night handing out gifts in the pub. Grabbing some gifts, I headed back into town to hand them out, then decided to head over to the desert and enter the skull caverns. I spent the entire day down there hunting iridium. Unfortunately, my cranium is absolutely hollow and my feeble existence was soon eradicated. I had lost my precious field snacks, so I ran all the way to the Adventurers Guild and purchased them back. It was Lewis's birthday on day seven, but more importantly, my deluxe coop was complete. So I made some more mayor machines and headed down to purchase some livestock. Snazi. After chopping a couple more trees, I decided to get to work with my gifting plan. I wanted to get a chest containing loved gifts of the residents outside every home, like for Robin. I began with Jody's, then spent the entire day searching for Vincent literally everywhere just to find the little twerp entering his room. I had forgotten about Lewis's birthday and feeling really bad about it, I grabbed the gift and gave it to George. Then wanting to make some progress towards meeting Krobus, I accepted a quest from Evelyn and chopped a bunch of geodes at Clint's. After donating a load of items, I wandered upwards and spent the day grinding for dwarf scrolls in the mines. My animals were annoyed the next morning, maybe because I hadn't fed them. I spent some time chopping a bunch of grass on my farm, then headed into town to hand out some gifts and finally walked back to the mines in search of dwarf scrolls. I actually managed to get my grubby fingers on one but had no luck for the rest of the day. Day 10 was Vincent's birthday so I was quick to grab a snail from the mud and hand it right over. I donated some things to the museum before heading to the mines in search of dwarf scroll 3. I managed to obtain one then headed down to level 80 for dwarf scroll 4 but to no avail. Day 11 I was a little stupid. I grabbed a bunch of crops for the community center then and spent the entire day searching the map for forageables for the community center. And when I eventually had enough, I headed over and both bundles were already complete. I chopped trees until nightfall. I remembered the premise of the video on day 12 and after grabbing a whole bunch of presents, I headed into town to hand them out. After buying a sapling from the merchant and giving the wizard a glob, I cleared the secret woods and spent the day fishing in the lake. My cauliflowers were done on day 13, so I harvested them all, tended to my animals and headed into town. Buying 160 straw seeds from Pierre, I traumatized the children in the egg hunt, collecting my 1000G. I spent the night planting my strawberries. Kent had sent an explosive to me in the mail. I do not trust the flat-topped man. But my pigs were grown up, so I moved the barn to a more open area, cleared my fruit bat cave, and chopped logs in the secret woods. I then decided to gather leaks for my quest, so I got absolutely none of them, entered the mines, killed ghosts for a quest, and spent the night tilling the ground, hoping for a scroll. I was rich with truffles on day 15. But that didn't matter as I needed to deliver a glob to the wizard I then decided to collect everything in my chest that could be donated and go donate them completing the boiler room in the process And after clearing the secret woods and finding a sneaky statue behind the community center I tilled dirt in the mines like a lot of it 
<laughs> and I got the wrong scroll. I was sure of myself as I entered the mines on day 16. How could I possibly still not get the fourth scroll after all of these days? I didn't get it. So I gave up, donated some things, and spent the day in the secret woods. There was an alien sound last night, so I headed back to the mines and hoed the floor. Again, coming out with absolutely nothing. I decided instead to return home and collect truffles. Noticing how spread out they were, I got to work crafting up and fencing out a large area, which I would improve the following day. But after adding a single gate, I decided nothing needed to be added and promptly left. Then noticing that Willy wasn't my best pal yet, I headed down to the beach to fish for a sea cucumber. The entire time I sat there, I didn't catch one, but on hindsight, it was literally impossible for me to do so. I donated one sardine and headed home. Noticing that my feeders were empty, I headed down to Money's the next day and bought a bunch of hay. I then gathered a bunch of gifts and spent the day handing them out. I was heading up to hand Robin a spaghetti when I realized they were all gone. The noodles had been thieved. So of course, I did nothing about it. On day 20, I made some space next to my pig barn, then grabbed some gold bars which I used to upgrade my axe. I then made a delivery and headed back to the mines where I returned to the hoeing spot and tilled the whole area, looking for the fourth dwarf scroll. I swear to you it's here. It literally says right here on the Stardew Valley Wikipedia. My strawberries were done the next morning, so I picked them all and threw them in the bin. I then grabbed my resources and chopped a couple of stones which I used to buy a new barn. I then headed down again to search for the scroll. I swear, this game really hates me. I've been looking for so long. I I'm actually gonna look- Oh, well, the museum's closed, so, uh, I got back to chopping. Checking on my pigs, I headed into town to hand Caloran flour, getting me to two hearts. This would mean I had access to a tea room, so then I could get the recipe for tea saplings, which I could use to befriend her and Mayor Lewis. I then accepted a quest to gather a thousand stone, collected my axe, and donated my scroll. But nothing happened, until I realized I didn't have the second one. And back to the mines I went. Day 23 was raining again, so I decided to take this opportunity to gather as many rain fish as I could for the community center. And all throughout the day, fishing in the river, lake, and ocean, I managed to donate a whole bunch of water dwellers. Day 24 was the flower dance, so after tending to my animals, I headed to the mines and chopped rocks. I then remembered it was the flower dance and wandered over. This year, absolutely everyone wanted to dance with me, so of course, I went with my boy Harvey. My strawberries were done again, as well as my barn. And as I wanted to upgrade it, I got to work chopping some trees. I bought the upgrade from Robin, then still needing to chop rocks for a quest, I entered the mines and gathered stone for the entire day. It was Pierre's birthday on day 26, so I headed into town and handed him a flower. I then grabbed a strange doll and cleared the secret woods before getting to work finding some leaks for Evelyn's quest. Also, I am now a cat boy. I have made a severe and I spent the rest of the day grinding for stone. I was a minuscule 150 stone off my goal the next day, so I entered the mines and got chopping. As soon as I had made it, I collected my prize of two and a half grand. Thank you for robbing my time, Miss Carpenter. I then realized I hadn't given gifts for a while, so I picked a bunch, headed into town, and handed them out. Robin sent me the recipe for a stone chest the next day, so I definitely say it was worth it. I then decided to upgrade my barn, so I chopped a bunch more trees, headed up, and purchased it. I then starred in Shane's suspicious film, handed out gifts, and went out searching for leaks, as it was the final day. I didn't find a single one. Day 29 was the first day of summer, so I cleared my strawberries, smelted some quartz, and got to work expanding my farm. I then headed to town and bought a stupid amount of seeds from Pierre, which I planted. I was then looking through my chests when I had a revelation. I had a Dwarf Scroll 3 in my storage, but the museum was closed, so I accepted Pierre's quest and headed home. Crafting a reasonable amount of coffee the next morning, I collected some things for the community center and headed down to donate them. I then donated some things to the museum, finally collecting my dwarvish translation guide. So I bombed the dwarf's front door, gave them a stone, and promptly left. I then grabbed a bunch of gifts and spent the day handing them out. My barn was complete the next day, so I headed down to Marnie's and spent my entire superannuation on Snonico. I then donated a bunch of things, did some fishing, donated, gave Sandy a flower, fished, donated, completed a quest, and gave some gifts. I petted my pigs on day 32, then headed to Robin's where I ordered an upgrade for my house. I then donated a grape, grabbed a bunch of geodes, and opened them all at Clint's. Donating a whole bunch of stuff to the museum, I returned home and grabbed a flower, which I gave to Jazz as a birthday gift. Cause you know, I love kids. <laughs> I then headed to the desert and gave Sandy a flower before donating some more and spending the night chopping trees. 
Harvesting some wheat the next morning, I headed to Pierre's to buy an apple sapling, cooking ingredients, and a bunch of seeds. I planted them all, then grabbing some gifts, I handed them out and completed a bundle in the community center. After handing out a couple more gifts the next day, I headed to the mines as Clint wanted me to collect some copper. I got it all, then did the obvious next step. Forgot he exists, and fished for the entire day. And I'm not even kidding. My house was upgraded on day 35, in case you were possibly wondering. After entering Galarine's tea room finally and consuming some suspicious liquid, I got to work fishing as Willy wanted four red snapper, until I realized they appeared when it was raining. So instead, I headed to the secret woods where I chopped the logs and fished until I caught a wood skip for the community center. I ended the day in the mine searching for a diamond as a gift. Because, of course, it was Gus's birthday. So after planting some tea saplings, I handed him a diamond. And after handing out some other gifts, I realized that it was raining and got to work catching some fish for the community center. I managed to donate a whole bunch. Gus was outside my home the next morning and gave me a mini jukebox. So I bought it inside and put on an absolute banger. I then donated some things and collected a keg in which I placed a cherry. I then spent the day handing out gifts to basically everyone, ending the day clearing the secret woods and visiting the dwarf. There was a blue haired woman outside my door. I spent the morning chopping grass to feed my animals, then sold a bunch of fish to Willy so I could afford another upgrade for my home. And once again, being the great Samaritan I am, spent the day handing out gifts. Day 39 was the luau, so after being worried about my truffle production, I forgot to feed them. I luckily got a gold star one and headed to the festival. Talking to a bunch of people, I threw it in, and the governor loved it, getting me a bunch of friendship points with everyone. A couple of crops were done on day 40, so after tending to my animals, Animals, I headed down, purchased some goods, visited the wizard, emptied the secret woods, gave some gifts, visited the beach, ordered an upgrade for my axe, headed to the desert, gave Sandy a flower, donated some artifacts, and finally donated the crops to the community center. I spent the night chopping trees. My basement was complete on day 41, so I might use it. More importantly, my melons were done, and goddamn, look at those melons. I was then heading into my coop when a dinosaur hatched. Grabbing a bunch of items, I headed to the community center where I completed some bundles and handed out some gifts. I spent the night replanting my melons. Heading into town, I completed a bundle and picked up my pickaxe from Clint before heading... Pam, heading to the desert, giving Sandy a flower, and entering the caverns. Until I realized I had abominable luck, exited, and returned to Pelican Town. I grabbed a bunch of gifts and headed up, got distracted at the mountain lake, and fished there until nightfall, giving some presents and donating some fish. Money was outside my door, and so was Jody. I collected some truffles, then headed up to Robin's, where I purchased two renovations for my home, then got straight to work fishing, as I needed two fish, a largemouth bass for Jody's dinner, and a sturgeon for the community center. Eventually, I managed to catch both, headed down, gave a bunch of gifts, and entered for a nice family dinner. I ended the day donating my sturgeon. I donated some wine on day 44, completing the bundle. I then headed to the mines where I bought some food, then gave Marnie a cave carrot, collecting Mayor Lewis's pants. He is certainly never getting these back. After collecting some truffles, I wanted to upgrade my hose, so I grabbed some copper, and I was literally half a second too late to upgrade it. I dislike that man. Buying a ton of ammo and a lava katana, I I spent the night chopping grass. My luck was neutral the next day, so after ordering my upgrade, I headed off to the desert and entered the Skull Caverns. I spent the entire day down there, mostly aiming to get either a prismatic shard or enough iridium for a pickaxe upgrade. And by nightfall, I had gotten both. Getting the galaxy sword and returning home, I was very happy with myself. Collecting 10 grand from Mr. Key the next morning, I grabbed a bunch of gifts and artifacts and headed into town. After handing them out, I bought some more goods from the dwarf, collected some resources, and one wandered over to Robbins to purchase a I committed a federal damage offense against public property and gave Linus a cactus fruit. Clearing my cave the next morning, I headed up and ordered a horse stable from Robin, then wandered down to the beach where I got to work trying to catch a tuna for the community center. Eventually, I got one, so I collected my hoe from Clint, opened some geodes, donated the minerals, and ordered an upgrade for my pickaxe. I then caught a ghost fish in the mines, which I donated, completing two bundles. I finished the day doing the first two steps of the Mr. Key questline. There was nothing to do on day 48. Everyone already had two gifts, my pickaxe was being upgraded, I needed beets for Mr. Key, and I didn't need any fish, so I just chopped trees for the whole day. I ended with almost 1,000. Mayor Lewis wants truffle oil. Also, my horse is here, who I named Slumber.
bus. I quickly headed over to pick up my pickaxe, hopped on the bus, and drove to the desert. I ran over to the skull caverns and stayed there for the entire day, even getting another prismatic shard and enough iridium for an axe upgrade. I realized I was halfway through my challenge on day 50, and I still hadn't even met Krobus. So I donated a bunch of stuff to the museum, broke some geos, upgraded my hoe again, and donated some more items. I then spent the day handing out gifts and giving the dwarf a rock for their birthday. I spent the night clearing out the secret woods. Gunter was at my door the next day, giving me the rusty key. Incredibly excited, I grabbed Krobus a welcome gift and headed over to the sewer exit. I met him and gave him a radish, gave out some other gifts outside, then returned to purchase a star drop. <laughs> Wandering over to the secret woods, I met the bear and gave him the syrup, and also gave the Joja truck driver my rabbit's foot, permanently increasing my luck. I spent the night searching the back of Mayor Lewis's home, looking for his stupid statue. I am goddamn rich. So after ordering an upgrade from my hoe from Clint, I headed over to Robbins and bought a furniture catalogue for the low price of my entire net worth. So I got to work decorating my home, but I kind of suck, so instead I gave Willie a diamond for his birthday and spent the night collecting up truffles. My melons were ready again, so I picked them all and donated some to the community centre. I then bought another catalogue from Pierre, returning to my home and got to work decorating. By the end of the day, I was happy with what I had created, with just a little bit of heavy inspiration. <laughs> Chopping a meteor the next morning, I headed over to Glint's and ordered an upgrade for my axe. I then took the minecart to the mines where I set out my rod looking for a walleye, until I realized they aren't around in summer. Realizing I had wasted my time, I returned to my home to get decorating. Getting a phone call from the hat mouse midway through, and by midnight, my home was starting to shape up. I realized I needed 25 gold star vegetables for Pierre's quest the next day, so I hurried over to the secret woods and picked up some quality fiddlehead fern. Unfortunately, you simply can't use them, so I gave Krobus a horseradish and returning home, spent the night decorating the lounge area of my house. Building up some floor dividers, I headed into town to hand out a bunch of gifts. When night fell, I decided to wander to Sintasap Forest to do some foraging, and when the festival eventually started, I headed over to the beach to bid farewell to the sun. Summer. Day 57 was the first day of full, so after picking up my Iridium Axe, I bought a stupid amount of seeds from Pierre and got to work tilling the entire farmland. I planted a bunch of seeds, visited Sandy for some beets, and finished the day fertilizing it all. In the morning of day 58, I headed to Glint's and upgraded my trash can before deciding that I wanted the highest quality hoe. So I took the bus to the desert and grinding Iridium there for the entire day, not quite getting enough by the time I had to leave. I had a whole whole lot of truffles on day 59, but unfortunately not many friends. Luckily in Stardew Valley I had plenty, so I went around the entire day handing out gifts, even visiting the desert to hand Sandy a flower. Collecting my copper trash can, I ordered an upgrade for my hoe and headed up to Linus when I accidentally let off a bomb, luckily not dealing a lot of damage. After handing out a bunch of gifts, I got to work fishing in the river, and eventually I caught the tiger trout that I was hunting for. Donating it, I completed the bundle. After purchasing a couple of coffees from Gus, I gave the wizard a blob and spent the night chopping the secret woods with my new purple axe. I had very good luck on day 61, so I decided to try and make it to level 100 in the Skull Caverns. After a bunch of preparation, I headed there via the bus and entered, staying there for the entire day. By the time I had to leave, I had made it to level 83, and if I had just warped there at 6am or bought just like 10 or so staircases, I would have made it. After stressing the whole day, I decided today was to relax. After tending to my animals, I cleared the secret woods and visited the wizard before visiting the stinky sewer man and also Corobus. I spent the rest of the night searching around for fall forage. I had had enough of farm animals on day 63 and decided it was just about time to befriend some slimes. So I smelted up some quartz and headed over to Robbins and purchased my slime. <laughs> Placing down my slime hutch since it was the first day of the week again, I wandered around town handing out gifts, then heading home. I finally had three apples on my tree the next day, and my beets were also ready for harvest. So I headed into town, dropped the beets off in Lewis's fridge, he didn't notice, headed up to donate the apples, completed the bulletin board, caught a walleye up at the mountain lake, and donated that as well, completing the fish tank. Handing out a couple of gifts and helping Willie with his 
crab problem, I spent the night intruding on private family matters. I had just a couple of letters the next morning, and after grabbing my iridium bars and ordering an upgrade for my trash can, I took the bus to the desert as I wanted a purple slime egg. Handing Sandy a flower and giving the skeleton a solar essence, I entered the skull caverns, unfortunately not having any luck at all. I left at around 6 to hand the granny a bar of copper that she wanted under her pillow. I won't question it. It was gifting day again, and since I am indeed the Rizzler, Jody now loves me. And now that's pretty boring, so I decided to decorate my lounge area again until literally 2am. It looks pretty good though. I checked on my slime pet before heading to the desert to hand Sandy a flower. I also remembered about the club card happily entering the casino. I bought some tokens, betted them all, and lost everything. Returning home, I decided to give Robin a call, but realizing I didn't have enough seaweed for a fish pond, sprinted over to the ocean. Quickly fishing up two of them, I galloped all the way up and she was gone. I spent the night decorating my kitchen. I chilled in my house for a bit, then headed over to Robin's and bought my fish pond. I then decided to do a little decorating around the farm, adding small hardwood fences with torches on top, as well as a bunch of stone flooring. Realizing that I had some vegetables that I could donate in my fridge, I rode into town, gave Marnie the good stuff, and accepted... I guess Pierre isn't doing his job. <laughs> Donating the produce, I returned home. Some of my pumpkins were done the next day, so I ran up. First, getting Linus to 10 hearts, I headed through town and got Pam to 10 hearts too. Collecting my iridium trash can from Clint, I headed over to Pierre's, where I gave Calorine the delicious eggplant that she was craving. Oh yeah, I uh, also uh, completed the pantry. I spent the night handing out gifts and interfering with Lewis and Marty's affair. After harvesting all of my pumpkins on day 71, I rode my horse over to the wizard's tower, Getting him to 10 hearts. I gave out a couple more gifts, then bought 170 pumpkin seeds from Pierre, which I planted. Then, after buying another fish pond for no apparent reason, I handed out gifts and decorated my television room until nightfall. Watching some TV the next morning, I headed outside to tend to my animals, then grabbed nine of my best items, as it was the Stardew Valley Fair. After begrudgingly feeding my animals, I headed into town, heated to the strength meter first try. It was the first time I did it, by the way, just got here by the the way. Setting up my display, I saw some animals and got my fortune read. Well, uh, <laughs> this is new. Also, I came first, unsurprisingly, rewarding myself with a rare crow. I ran into town on day 73 because I wanted to collect my ancient seeds from the museum. Planting it all alone in my greenhouse, I grabbed a flower, drove to the desert, and gave it to Sandy. And realizing I didn't want to be there, I instantly returned. On my farm, I remembered about the fish bond I had and for no particular reason threw in a scorpion cup, cause why not? After having Handing out a couple more gifts, I decided that I wanted to catch a lava eel on day 74. So I headed to the mines, descended, and threw out my rod. After a bunch of trash, I eventually hooked it and failed instantly. Annoyed, I exited, rode to Willy's, bought some tackle and bait, rode back and descended, and got back to fishing. It took five hours for me to hook the eel again, but I did end up catching it. I began day 85, purchasing a new barn, then expanding the pig's domain on my farm. And after placing down some preserving jars, I headed off to the desert where I bought five warp totems, because it was time to get Mr. Key's milk. I bought bombs from the dwarf, ammo from Marlin, a stupid amount of food from Gus, and I was ready. But I didn't have good luck, so I stayed home, and after being jump scared by a fossil, I got to work decorating the rest of my home, staying with the same cabin nature style. By nightfall, I was very happy with the result. But I had decent luck the next day, so I warped straight over and got started. I got stupidly lucky with a bunch of pits early on and easily made it to level 100 at a measly 5 p.m. After congratulating me on not using any staircases, Mr. Key finally gave him his milk. It tasted bad and had a horrible texture, so I moved on, gathering iridium and headed home on floor 114 and with more than 100 iridium ore. I headed up to Robin's the next morning and ordered an upgrade for my fourth barn. I then wandered into town where I got money to 10 hearts, then Pierre, then Evelyn, then the dwarf, then Willy, and finally Caroline. All I had left to do was Jazz and George, both at nine hearts, then Krobus and Sandy, both at seven. Returning home, I filled my second fish tank and spent some time watching the bullhead. Pam had sent me some E, and I was once again out of hay, so I decided to chop a bunch of hay on my farm before deciding to craft up some looms and truffle oilers. And seeing as there wasn't much to do yet, I got started with perfection and tried my best to ship one of every single item I 
owned, including a bunch of food. It was finally Goggy's birthday, so I rode over, found some cookies in the trash, and gave them to him. Handing out gifts to Jazz, Krobus, and Sandy, I bought 160 starfruit seeds, and while I waited for the ancient seeds to grow, I filled the greenhouse with them. I ended the day giving my eels some quartz and gathering truffles. Clearing my farm cave on day 81, I wanted to expand the museum's collection, so I opened a bunch of geodes, donated and headed to the desert, traded for artifact troves, opened them and donated a bunch of items. I then saw that I had a quest from Linus saying to fish up trash, so I headed to the mines, descended, and in less than four hours, I had 20 pieces of trash. Depositing them and collecting my... 500G, I returned home. I wanted more Omni Geodes on day 82, so I bought a ton of dangerous explosives off a little dude and headed to the desert. I spent the whole day down there, not particularly trying to get down, but just to break as much as I could, getting a solid 60 Geodes by nightfall. Today was an exciting day with lots planned. I first headed to Robin's where I bought a bunch of recipes, returned home, and spent the entire day changing my floor to look slightly nicer. The entire day. But by 10pm, I wandered into town to Spirit's Eve, where I speed ran the maze, grabbed my pumpkin, and dipped. Day 84 was the final day of fall, so I picked all of my pumpkins and truffles, got a little confused at Linus's antics and headed to the desert. There I talked to Sandy for the extra friendship, then descended into the sewers where I gave Krobus a pumpkin. Heading home, I fixed some path and watched some TV. It was winter on day 85. I got to work selling all of my pigs as over winter they won't be providing the good stuff. I then headed down to buy some heaters, auto collectors, and a whole bunch of g I hate that woman. Descending into the sewers, I gave Krobus a pumpkin for his birthday, getting me to 10 hearts. It was only Sandy left. So I gave her a flower and spent the day searching the map for a snow yam, but to no avail. Now, the reason I needed a snow yam was because it was the very last item that I needed to complete the community center. So I rode around the entire map, literally everywhere, and didn't find one. Disappointed, I tried my luck in the desert. I don't know what I was thinking. Returning home, I gave my fish some coconut coconuts and crafted another egg hatcher before finishing the day by handing Lewis the oil. I am happy to report it was very slick. Today's goal was to simply find a snow yam, so after checking on my star fruit, I headed up looking for worms. And just a few later, I got one, sprinted to the community center and donated the final item that I needed. The Junimos said goodbye and the community center was complete. Also, the clock started moving, so uh, that's something. I spent the rest of the day torturously purchasing 60 goats and also a silo. Heading in the next day, the whole town was celebrating the completion of the community center. Of course, Pam is in the kitchen and Demetrius is in the vault room, committing theft. Watching PS suck Morris out of the building, I returned home and placed my statue where it belongs. Then heading to the newly unlocked quarry, I committed multiple acts of terrorism and the place was eradicated in a matter of hours. Oh yeah, I also got the golden scythe. So <laughs> I had some interesting mail. Willie asked me to meet him in the back room, and the wizard wanted some iridium. So I grabbed some and rode over, handing one to him and accidentally gifting him one too. Slightly annoyed, I wandered up to Robin's and bought the community upgrade of Pam's house. I then headed to Willie's back room and found a ruined boat that needed resources to fix. Unfortunately, I couldn't find my batteries anywhere, so that's unfortunate. On day 90, I wanted an auto pedder, but since I hadn't used the Jojo route to complete the community center, the only way to get it at this point was treasure floors in the Skull Caverns. So so I began my grind, but I unfortunately came out empty-handed. But I wanted to try my luck again, so I checked up on Robin's progress and headed back. By the way, is this rare for level 1? I spent the whole day down there in the mines, but gave up when I saw an infested level. I had no luck at all. My goats had finally grew up on day 92, so I took their milk, crafted some cheese presses, and got pressing. I then realized it was the fishing festival, so I wandered down, talked to no one, began the event, and won with relative ease. You know what? they call me the fish whisperer. <laughs> Heading into town the next day, Pam and Penny's new house was complete, and checking it out, it was pretty sick. It was pretty sick that it cost half a million gold. I then took the bus over to Sandy's to hand her a flower, then returning home, I got to work checking my slimes and resizing my farm to fit the new iridium sprinklers. I then finally realized that I was only missing one of the eight rare crows. After harvesting a huge amount of star fruit from my greenhouse, I headed to the desert. As I knew the last rare crow was waiting there. All I needed to do was get 10,000 casino tokens. So I got gambling. 
I'm actually losing it. I've been here for half an hour. I'm gonna scream a poop. Eventually, I got the tokens I needed and bought the rare crow. It was definitely worth it. I got a special letter on day 95, awarding me with a new scarecrow. That was surely worth it. After tending to my animals, I decided to head upwards to see Robin and move all of my buildings away. I then filled in the perimeter with flooring as I wanted the buildings to look like they had a foundation and it was sure to look great. So I returned to place them back and they just broke the floor out underneath. I purchased a new shed, but Robin, I will never forgive you. I wanted to make some money from my star fruits on day 96, and for that I needed some kegs. Luckily I had plenty of the other resources except wood, so I headed to the desert and literally broke every palm tree in this plane of existence and said hello to Sandy. And after chopping all the trees on my farm, I was able to craft a solid 20 kegs. Heading over to my newly built shed, I placed in my kegs, then I realized I wanted to expand. So I rode downwards to decimate the local environment to craft two more kegs. I filled them all up, then decided to get more tappers, to get more pine tar, to get more kegs, to get more wine, to get more money, so I evicted a couple of squirrels. I managed to craft 13 tappers the next morning, which I placed on my trees. I then headed to the desert where I gave Sandy a flower. When I returned, I checked my fish ponds, which wanted a golden relic and basalt. So I headed to the desert and bought some treasure troves, which I opened at Clint's. I got absolutely nothing from over a hundred Omni Geodes worth of goods. So I headed to the desert for the last time and got a relic off my first worms. Why would they want this anyway, man? I planted a coffee plant in my kitchen on day 99, then headed to the desert to talk to Sandy. I then returned to commit hate crimes against the quarry and to sell 500 slimes to Marlin. But now it was time to get the Golden Lewis statue. So I pickaxed around, got impatient, and blew the place to bits. I concluded that it simply had and spawned. I spent the night at the night market buying two cone hats, one for me and one for my horse. And it was finally day 100. I tended to my animals and chilled in the park for a little before wandering around the map looking for foragebles, until I realized Sandy still wasn't at 10 hearts. I rode the bus over and handed her a flower, completing my challenge. But no secret achievement came. Then I remembered about something. The child on the island. So I'll do him next time. Thank you so much for watching until the end. I'm trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by the next Ice Age, so please like and subscribe. Also, uh, want another plot twist? There was no achievement. I just checked. I've been deceived by my own stupidity. I mean, at least it contributes to perfection. Bye.